In this video, I'm gonna provide you with some insight into a recent ITX gaming PC I built. I wanna fill you in on some post-build setup steps I took, as well as what the performance was after all the setup was completed. This way, if you're thinking of building an ITX with these components, then this probably will help you out moving forward. So if you haven't checked out my recent video where I actually built that ITX machine, you might wanna go ahead and check that out first because that might help you get some insight as far as to what I'm gonna be talking about here in this video. So if you wanna check out that video where I built this PC right here, then go ahead and click the link up in the top and that'll take you directly there. Or you can click the link in the description. I provided that for you as well for convenience. So go ahead and check out that video. Don't worry, I'll wait. Hello techies and gamers, it's your boy Jermaine with Tech Toys and Gaming. Welcome back to my channel and if you haven't done so already, go ahead and give this video a like, go ahead and subscribe and turn on those bell notifications so you don't miss the next up and coming hot new video. So with this new ITX build, I wanna give you some of the basics with as far as how I configured it. I wanna go over some of the things like the BIOS setup, post Windows install, application installs, chipset driver installs, um, as well as looking at some of the monitoring and benchmark apps I installed. Now, there is one slight twist I added to this and you may like this, many may not. And the twist is I'll be running my new rig on a 4K 120 Hertz HDR Vizio P series TV. What are you crazy? PC gaming on a TV? Or what about keyboard and mouse use? Huh? Or what about input lag, huh? And what about the resolution, huh? What do you mean PC TV gaming? Is he gone yet? <sighs> My goodness, the way people take this sort of thing to heart. Oh! I told you it's not possible! Don't be so quick to judge, especially if you've never actually tried it yourself. A lot of people don't even have 120 hertz gaming monitors at that. So to have 120 hertz TV and to be able to game on that from the comfort of your couch, how beautiful is that? And since I'm gaming on a couch, what kind of control will I use for gaming? Will I use keyboard and mouse input? Hmm, wait a minute, I'm on the couch. How would I use a keyboard and mouse? First, I'm using this small keyboard and mouse controller, which kind of looks like a game pad uh, made by Anwish, 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 Anwish. How do you pronounce that? I don't know. Hey Google, wait, Google doesn't know how to pronounce that either. That's not a name. What? Second, for gaming, I went with the Xbox controller as my preference. It's a cool custom-made Batman Xbox controller. Uh, it has a snifty little keyboard I can actually attach to it. Um, works like a charm. I can actually take quick little screenshots. And along with the Xbox One controller, I use an Xbox wireless adapter, which actually is compatible with Xbox One and up. That includes Xbox One S and Xbox One X. Now I know what you're thinking, wireless controller, Xbox dongle to your PC, input lag. I see you tech bougie guys and gals that I will be the first to tell you that I noticed very little to no difference between the wired connection to my PC and the wireless Xbox controller dongle. I want to tell you a little bit about the hardware setup as far as how I had the computer set up on the floor on my carpet and the thermals as well as how I switched that up to kind of correct a thermal problem I had to get intake, check it out. Initially, I tested with my PC on the floor, which I did indeed have carpet. However, that proved to be a bad idea since I wasn't getting good airflow underneath the case. So to resolve this problem, I complained enough out loud till eventually my wife bought me this cool little stand. The stand is about three inches off the ground and has these awesome grates at the bottom, which allows airflow to go in and out through the bottom of the case fans. If you're interested in this, you'll find the link in the description. This essentially allowed me to bring my core temps down to 45 degrees Celsius from 50 while idling. Okay, so with all of that said, why don't we go ahead and jump right in and take a look at what's happening on this machine. Let's do it. Let's just do it. Forget all this stuff. Let's just go right in and see if it's worth it. First, I updated my BIOS to the latest version from the manufacturer's site, in this case Asus, since I'm using the ROG Strix B450i. It's always a good idea to check your processor motherboard compatibility and update the BIOS where needed. Other than this update, the only other change I made was enabling DLCP, also known as XMP, for my RAM to ensure I'm getting the retail speeds I paid for. Unfortunately, in most cases, it's not always set this way by default, so be sure to enable this in your BIOS if it's not set already. With basically out-of-box BIOS settings, I set an alarm to wake me up once Windows 10 finished installing. So after Windows 10 installed, I went ahead and downloaded all the chipset drivers. Once my chipset drivers were installed, then I went online and ran Windows updates and got all the updates I needed, as well as downloaded and installed an antivirus. Very important. Then I went ahead and downloaded some geek stuff like 7-Zip for zip file management. 
CPU-Z for processor monitoring and benchmarking, MSI Afterburner for its on-screen overlays to monitor hardware and capture performance in real time. Then once I've installed those, I went ahead and installed my game client. Steam, Xbox, Epic, Ubisoft, and whatever other gaming client you tend to use or would like to use, go ahead and install it. If no one's ever heard of GOG Galaxy, go ahead and check out the link in the description. I left it there for you. That is a place where you can actually synchronize all of your game clients into one location and manage all of your games and even launch games from this one user interface, which is kind of cool. So go ahead. It's free. Click the link. I'm not promoting. Okay, so now to the fun part. I went over here to GOG, found Destiny 2, press play, and it automatically goes over to Steam and initializes. I first head over to the video settings and set graphics quality to the highest because why not? Then I immediately proceed to jump into my first mission just to see what this machine can actually do. Test the performance, look at frame rates, see what the experience is like playing wirelessly with an Xbox One controller, and lay some of these poor pathetic souls to rest while in the process. In this take, I only had the GeForce FPS capture on, and as you can see at highest quality, I'm getting anywhere between 80 and 90 FPS on average, sometimes spiking up in the hundreds. Not shabby at all. Here we have some footage directly on TV, and as you can see, that 120Hz is surely coming through, and though my camera is only capturing 60 of those frames, it's still eye candy nonetheless. So far, this TV is definitely performing better than I expected. But let's go ahead and push the envelope just a little bit more and see what it can do. With that said, I fired up GTA 5 and of course put it to the highest settings. And right off the top, as you can see, I'm already starting off at 188 FPS with all, all the hardware running stable. That's not too bad. Uh, well, more stable than my legs are in that little clip. You didn't see that? And let me just go over here and take it out on my partner if I can. Uh, like Obviously, um, he's bulletproof, so never mind that part as well. But the main thing to take away from here is the excellent performance and hardware stability on all fronts. Next, I jumped into a game called LiveLock. Never played it before, but of course, I go into settings and try to set it to max, but couldn't figure out how to get it past 144Hz. I'll take that L and move right along. So I jumped in here and played this title for a while. And again, fantastic performance with both PC and all hardware still running stable. And why this title, you ask? Well, I've always been a fan of top-down games, especially Diablo 3. I've played that for some years now, and uh, I always love me a good bird's eye view action RPG game. But also, the graphics here are really nice, so it's a good test for the hardware. And as promised, here are some Cinebench results, which are quite impressive. As you can see in this test, the Ryzen 5 3600 slightly topples the Ryzen 7 1700X. That is an 8-core, 16-thread processor. Numbers don't lie, my friends. The results and performance do not lie. So, as you can see, TV gaming is indeed a thing. It is possible, right? So for all you skeptics, there you have it, TV gaming in your face, literally. In the end, is it really worth the extent of paying 13, 14, $2,000 just to have to say, you know what? Let me go ahead and overclock this because 4.5 gigahertz isn't enough. I need to run 16 gigahertz of what? You can get 600 frames per second. Here's a, I got a bag of dry ice on me now. I carry me all the time. But don't stop it, tech bougies. In the end, the choice is yours. Dabble if you like, if you're a technician, maybe you're a tech bougie. Something you might have to ask yourself. Am I tech bougie? So if you like the content I'm providing, and if you find it entertaining, go ahead and give this a thumbs up. Subscribe, turn on the bell notifications, that way you get the notice when I produce a new video. Ooh, you're gonna like this next one I'm coming up with, right? It's when I start to jump off buildings with a parachute and balloons in my hand. Well, maybe not all that. Well, my friends, that about wraps it up for this video. Looking forward to my next video and seeing you there. And we won't invite Mr. Mr. Tech Bougie, all right, because he's a little hostile with his um, frame rates and dedicated monitor PC gaming stuff. I told you it's not possible. I told you it's not possible. I told you it's not possible. That is what's gonna. That is what. That is what. Oh. That. 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 That is what. Damn, I, that is what's gonna allow you to use your mega. To use your megahertz.